previously on Rice Farming TV. Is all this work for nothing? The reason I ask is because tomorrow, for three days, there's a projected rainfall of about one and a half inches. That could be detrimental to all this work we've been doing. Was all that tractor work for nothing? I've got my shovel and we're gonna find out. All right, let's work. It's the 2020 crop year. My name is Matthew Sliger. That's right, we're out in California planting rice by air. Welcome to the rice fields. Ride with me from planting to harvest. This is California rice, my friends. You're watching Rice Farming TV. Yeah, for eight days straight in the rice fields, we ran the tractors hard with our chisel plows, tilling up the soil, exposing it to air out and dry down. On the ninth day, it rained nearly one and three quarters inch. That's about, that's about this much. Yeah, it rained a bit harder than expected and it saturated everything, including the soil that we want dry. So right now I'm gonna lead you over to one of our rice fields and we're gonna take a look at the condition of the soil, evaluate when we can get back into the fields and continue our tractor work. Now surprisingly, after about 24 hours post rainstorm and the sun popping in and out of the rice fields, the surface of the soil appears dry. That's great. However, let's take a look deeper down. Now I've got a good cross section of the soil here after parting it with the shovel. I want to make sure you can see what I'm seeing. Just below the surface, just below that dry layer that has been baking in the sun, we already see a darker, smoother feel area of the soil. And that darkened smoothness is moisture. I can feel it. It's cold to the touch, slightly wet. The blade slice through it kind of like clay because it is wet. And I can go all the way down to here, and it's not until about right here that I start seeing some lighter brown soil. So that's about four inches deep. So that one and three quarter inch rainstorm soaked our soil four inches deep. So what are we gonna do? Great question. Just because we can't be working out in the fields doesn't mean we can't be working around the equipment yard. So let's head back over there, and I'll show you how we've prepped for the coming days. Look what happens when I kind of mix that up. All that dark soil comes back off to the surface. Can you see the difference from here to there? Just, that's just, that's just wet. Let me even squeeze this together and you can see it makes this clay-like ball. Anyway, it's just too wet. But it's not detrimental. It may cause us to do one extra pass over the soil. Notice all the tire tracks around the equipment yard so you can see we've been moving a lot of equipment around preparing them for the next two days. Come on, follow me over to the Case 260 Magnum and the Case 340 Magnum. I wanna show you what we've done to the chisel plows. Come on. So here's the pull chisel hooked up to the Case 340 Magnum. You notice anything different with it? Take a look at the shanks, the tips of the shanks. You see those? So what we have down here are sweeps, which are basically like little shovel blades, which are going to hopefully penetrate the soil and flip a layer over. The idea is that after a couple of days, top two inches of our soil is going to dry out with the sun and wind. Then we'll go in with the tractors, make one pass with the sweeps, and then flip the soil over so that bottom two inches where it's still wet will then be exposed to the air and the sun and dry out that much sooner rather than just waiting for the air and sun to dry down the entire four inches. So Larry and I were super busy this morning taking the chisel shanks off two of our plow chisels and of course attaching on 
these sweeps. Now we're gonna have to sit tight for the next couple of days and allow that top layer, that top two inches to dry out. So right now it would just be too soon to enter in the field. So we've got early days, but at least we're prepped and ready to go once that surface layer is dried out. But what was Pops doing as we were changing out the chisel teeth for sweeps? He had his buddy Jerry Amos over and they did a little bit of, hmm, therapeutic pounding, I guess you could say. Now you all of course remember the day before the storm hit in Ricky's tractor, the three point chisel ripped apart. Total tractor fail, our tractor ripped up our chisel plow. Well, since we're all on standby and hanging out the equipment yard, Jerry came over and fixed it. Come on, let's go take a look. So the repaired three point chisel is right there on the case 245, but I just wanted to show you the yellow corn disc and more importantly, this mud puddle that we got as a gift from the big storm that hit. And speaking about the corn disc, a lot of you have been asking how my corn crop is going. Well, I'm gonna give you an update once I explain what we did to the three point chisel. Let's go. So it's hooked up right now, so you're not going to get the best view of it, but let me just show you, check it out. Big difference from what it looked like two days ago, doesn't it? I think Rick's gonna be surprised when he gets back and see it already in tip top shape. So just some extra features that we added, thicker wall tubing here, and also three gussets around the base of this tubing. This entire thing should be a little bit stronger, but it also ripped apart because this three point here was jamming and gouging out this side of the tubing. So hopefully with a thicker tubing will prevent that. This will be tougher here, also be tougher down there. So all in all, Jerry did a fine job. Wow, Jerry, cut to fit, huh? Did a lot of grinding work. Of course, did an artisanal job of welding the tubing back in, adding the gussets, and probably the most laborious job was cleaning up the ears that broke off. And he welded those on two specs. Also one cool thing that I like to point out, he's got all his measurements here, so everything is perfect. And that's just how Jerry works. Hear any good jokes recently? So awesome, the three point chisel <laughs> is back in working condition. Not much downtime for that. Actually, because of the storm, we lost no downtime with this chisel because we couldn't work in the fields anyway and now it's fixed. Thanks, Jerry, that's awesome. Oh, Jerry also fixed that crack on the pull chisel. Come on, let's go take a look at that. I mean, you know which one I'm talking about. That crack that I saw at the end of the night last, last Friday as well, I believe it was. Getting a little crack. Usually does crack out there, as you can see by the welds and the arrows from past years. So you see, here it is. Here's where Jerry welded up those cracks. They weren't too big of a deal, but since he was out here, we got them done. You guys wanna check in on my corn crop now? Okay, fine, let's do it. Here is my corn crop. Drum roll, please. From this stake, in a straight line, to this stake. Now, I'm not the best corn farmer, obviously, not yet anyway. I don't even really know what baby corn looks like. And this is kind of a weedy field, so I don't even want to try to guess. Do you think that's it right there? Is that my corn plant right there? Or, or is that it? I don't know. I just don't know. The only thing I do know is that my corn crop got about an inch and three quarters of irrigation water yesterday. So it should be germinated, right? Anyway, let me know down in the comment section. So many of you who watch this are much better corn farmers than I am. So I'm going to let you tell me. So that's all I know was all that tractor work, the chisel plowing that we did over the last eight days before the rainstorm. Was it all for nothing? Not all for nothing, but we are going to do an extra pass over most of our fields 
to dry out the soil so we can get back on it sooner. Fortunately, we've got an early start of preparing the soil this year. It's only the second week in April, so we're going to push hard and keep going and get the job done. Was that super inspirational? It was to me, but that's the problem with this. We need to let the weather now help us, help us dry it out. We don't want to get in there too soon and start making big ruts with our tires, compacting the soil. Wow, you know what? I just realized by saying the word compaction, a lot of farmers ask me, are we worried about compaction, running the tractors so much through the field? No, never, you know why? Because we're chisel plowing it twice. We're disking it once. We're fluffing up the soil doing those operations. The only time we would be worried about compaction is now after a storm when wanting to dry our fields out. So. I guess it depends, right? We don't want to go out there and create tire tracks and compact the soil because that would just make it so that it would take longer for it to dry out. Also our sweeps running through, if the soil was compacted, the sweeps would only be going so deep during those compacted parts, whereas they'd be going optimal in the more fluffier parts. So good question, everybody. Do we worry about compaction? Not on a normal year. In this one little situation, Yes, we do. Hey, I'm heading out. I'm heading home. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Rice Farming TV, catching you up after the storm. We'll be out here tomorrow. I'm not sure exactly what we'll be doing, but Pops will find something for us to do. I guarantee it. Hit the thumbs up button if you also enjoyed the video. If not, just leave a comment down below and tell me what you'd like to see. I'll do it. I don't care. Anyway. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.